I'm just going to demonstrate how to make a paper and newspaper frame. I've got here uh, what I'm using as a template. I've got PVA glue and a chunky brush. And I've got four strips of uh, paper, so cut to the same width and longer than what I need to create a frame. So I'm just placing those around that template and uh, I want to align them with the right angles and also thinking a little bit about how much is overlapping these bits here that overlap outside of what the frame will be. Um, so that's roughly it. I'm not going to position any more accurately than that in a minute because I need to get the right angle of one of the corners sorted first. So that's how I'm going to uh, attach that at that point there. I'm going to use some PVA glue with that chunky brush and I'm just going to lift that bit out of the way because I know a bit another piece of paper is going to overlap there so I need to attach them with the glue so I'll just brush that on like that and then I'll place that paper over that. Okay so checking with the template good that's at a right angle so that's going to work for this and then you've got these bits that overlap here and they're going to get glued uh, over like that to hold them in place that's all good because it's going to make the corners of this paper frame even stronger and I'll do that bit there so any bit that overlaps any bit that goes out the edge you fold it so that it maintains that width of that frame. We're not having any bits sticking out at this stage, anyway, of the frame. So that's all neat and secured. And then I'll move on to the next one. So I'll do this one next up here. I'll just flap that bit up and check the placing of the template. So you do need to keep checking that. And I'll hold that in position now. Get the glue on there. So I'm going to overlap and then hold it all in place, flap that back, okay, that went in perfect. So I just need to fold these bits over it and then glue them into position. So a bit of glue in there. Thinly and evenly. You don't want to go over the top, but you do want it to stick. Right, good so far. So then I'm going to move on to the other side there. And just checking with the stencil, the template rather, that's going there. Glue over the bit that I'm going to overlap with this piece of paper. Now positioning it, I don't line it up, I come over the edge and you see you've got quite a bit to play with on the width length of the frame to overhang. So I'll make the best of that so that there's an overhang and that's not quite the same, that's, that'll do though. And then I'm going to put glue here and I can fold in that little overhang tab seals it in, makes it even stronger, but it's going to look neat as well. And fold that in, I'll pass them on that bit, but it doesn't matter because it's not going to be seen by the time I'm finished with that. This is literally just the base and I'll flap that, flip that bit back, I know that I need to put glue there now, this is on the last one last corner, flip that down, pat it down, a bit of glue for that flap, fold it over, and this bit here, right, so now there's a lot of us in the classroom, so it's easy for me to do this here while the classroom's quiet, I'll just take that template away so you can see what it's like. I've got a little flap here. Now, yeah, so as I was 
about to say. You, uh, there's a lot of you in the classroom, so it would make sense to buddy up. You each need to make a frame, um, but you could work in pairs to help each other because like, one might hold the template, but the other one is gluing. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my name on it now. So that's really important because there's lots of these going to be made and we do not want to have a mistaken identity. And I'm just going to write art group, but you would write, write um, the code of your art group, not your tutor group. Otherwise that's going to get confusing for me. So that's the first stage. Now, then it's on to the kind of more exciting bit where we're going to start to uh, create um, a decorative frame. So imagine, you know, if you've ever been into, visited an old museum with paintings in it or an old house, you might have seen, more often than not, they're gold. Um, and they're possibly uh, made out of plaster with texture on it and pattern and form or it's carved wood and then gilded with gold. We're not going to use any of that. We're just using newspaper. And uh, I'm going to show you how to plait with newspaper and then that's going to get glued on to, around this frame and then I'm going to show you a, a, what's called a spill technique, all using newspaper. Now this first newspaper, I'm going to tear it into th th uh, almost three equal uh, strips. And you won't all need to do this. Um, to be honest, I can just use that, but it will, I will tear again. Um, there's a grain to newspaper. If I try to tear it the other way, it's all going to go wonky. So if you're not sure, you can always ask, can't you? But it's to do with the way the paper's produced. That's almost torn in a, a straight line, hasn't it? So this is going to be handy for what I'm going to do. I need three of these to start off with because I'm going to plait. The newspaper so it's going to need three there's a staple there so that's why I'm being quite careful I'll just pull that away Ooh, there you go I might be able to pull that staple out which make it easier for the next person that needs to have some newspaper strips right so I've got there's one of them I'm just going to sort of scrunch it like that that do. I'm sort of rotating it slightly as well. I seem to be. Um, they won't. They won't completely hold, but it will do for um, the initial stage. I'm just getting them prepped because I'm going to uh, plait with them shortly. Right. So I've got my three done. I'm going to use some glue. Put a little tab there. And then I'm going to overlap on that with the second piece. And I'll do that with the third piece. Now what I'm doing is I'm kind of positioning them so that they kind of like splay out like that. Just hold that to make sure it's pushing it hard, squeezing it hard so it's going through the paper. Um, okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start plaiting. So for some of you, this is you've done it many times before. Others, we are maybe doing this for the first time. So I suppose a way to try and make it easy to understand is that if I hold that there, this is the central one at the minute. And then I might start with my right hand side and then I'll make that the central one. Because what was the centre now is on the right hand side. Then I'm going to go in with this left hand one and make that the central one. So what was on the far right hand side is now on the left hand side. And then this one, that's going to go into the centre. So they each have their turn in sequence of being at the centre. So like that. I'm not doing it too tight. But trying to keep it neat. Now I suppose what I'm doing is I'm kind of scrunching it or slightly twisting it as I put it into the plait. I'm being a little bit conscious of the edges of the um, strips of newspaper because I want to twist that in. 
it would look more attractive if I do that little twist like that now it's curving it looks a little bit like uh, the tail of a uh, scorpion at the minute and it's about to sting my hand um, I can always bend it back if that's a bit off-putting so mostly done now I mean you I try not to overthink it and it's kind of like once you've learnt this it's like muscle memory you kind of don't have to really think about it anymore and so that will just come with practice now I'm at the end here I can't really plait that bit anymore so I'm going to put a bit of glue on there and then I'm going to plait that one in might even uh, hold that bit in like that and then a bit more glue just to put that in and then this bit fold over neaten that bit in and then oh, that could go around the back actually as long as it holds you just try and make a neat as job as possible on the ends so like that so neat plait you look there then what I'm going to do I'm going to be putting this onto the corner so I'm just going to like halve it like that then I'm going to place that after I've glued into position to sorry in the position I want it to be glued on this paper back so I'll put that I'm going to put mine slightly in because I'm going to show you a second technique in a minute that can almost act like a sort of rim to the frame this has got the nice plaited texture and we can do things with this later on like add colour to it um, not necessarily gold um, but it could be a colour of your choice uh, but maybe it, paint it in a way so that you can still see its newspaper um, this is quite nice isn't it to be an upcycler and to kind of do extraordinary things with um, cheap materials so in a way that's very impressive when artists do that seems a bit more ethical as well so anyway I'm going to use a, a single sheet of the newspaper so I've got the newspaper here I'm just going to need to carefully we'll try not to tear it separate that with uh, out of the um, staples there's just two on that newspaper and I'm just going to shift this up a little bit because I want to show you on a flat surface how to create a spill so I'm positioning that slightly at diagonal to me so one the bottom uh, corner is kind of facing towards me and I'm just going to fold in a triangle and then I'm going to fold parallel there you go first one And I'm doing it as tight as I can, quite fiddly this. You must be mindful as you do this. You can't just start it and then stop and have a conversation with your neighbour. Here we go. Right, now, it's part of the challenge is keeping it parallel. We don't want one end uh, kind of uh, splaying out more than the other end. We do not want to create a cone. Um, we want it to be as much like a tube as possible. It's still like a flattened tube at the minute because I'm folding it. But I might be able to roll it in a minute. However, this bit here, the... Um, where the newspaper folds this is a bit I've got to be very careful of because that fold can send my spill my tube of newspaper spiraling out of control not spiraling but becoming like a cone right so I've got to be careful I'm now reaching that point 
So far, so good. Right, I think this one's going to be okay. Well, I've got to keep concentrating. So actually me mul trying to multitask, explain to you what I'm doing and roll this at the same time is a bit of a challenge for me. Right, I think I might, yeah, might be able to roll that now for this last bit. Some people get really good at this and they can roll it from a much earlier stage. Now, I've got to hold that in place. I do need the glue. I can't let that go. If I let that go, what's going to happen? It's going to unfurl. And that's very difficult to make it tight again. Actually, I don't think I've ever managed to make it tight again. So I've put glue in that last bit so that I can roll that in. And now I know I can let go of it. If I was to let go of that without it being glued, I'd be in trouble. I'd have to basically do it again. So I move this frame back in shot. There you go, that looks right. And this is a spill. Um, so the bit in the centre, that's got the most rolls of newspaper. The bits at the edge, that's just one bit really. So it's really flimsy, that bit. But that bit for a single sheet of newspaper is pretty strong actually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to need to bend it roughly in the middle. So I'll try and I'm, I'm estimating or guesstimating the middle. So I'm just going to do that. And because I did it quite tight, I'm just going to put a bit of pressure on that. Then that is going to go in there. So I'm going to just put a bit of uh, glue where I need that to follow the inside edge like that and then place that down there now I'm not going to demonstrate the making of the the entire making of this uh, frame right now I've run out of time uh, but what you do is I would then do the other three corners I think it's better to start with corners because they are the bit that needs to be the strongest of a frame and then maybe there might be some other uh, decorative feature in the middle possibly maybe a coil I could do a spill and then coil that maybe I'll demonstrate that that might be quite good to show you because I think people might quite like to do that so I'll just get another sheet of newspaper And then when I've done that, I'm going to uh, say that's it for this particular demonstration. So, I did do it that way last time. I can do it this, this uh, diagonal, diagonally facing towards me. So the, remember the triangle, then the folding, tight. So it's fiddly. I have to do this flat on the table. I can't do it mid-air. It would be a disaster. Right, so trying to keep it parallel. See if I can do it a bit faster this time. And actually, I've got this fold going the other way. I wonder whether that's any better. I don't know about that. You could experiment and you could tell me what you think. So, see how quick I can do it. Can I roll it? Oh, not quite. Yeah, yeah. I'm rolling. That's quite early on roll for me, so I'm very pleased with that. Got to put that glue in. I cannot let go of it though, remember. There we go. Right, so what I can do with this is I can like coil it up so I could from this it's very easy this end and the thicker I get further into the spill it's going to get more difficult but it will look good on the when I look on the end right what I'm going to do is I'm going to start running some glue along this now and the reason why if I didn't it would just come unfurled so 
So you're going to get gluey fingers. I'd enjoy it if I was you. Right, so use that glue that I've got on the fingers to hold that in place. So I think that looks pretty cool. That coil, just a little bit there, squish it in. So that might be really nice to put maybe in the center, possibly put that there. Now what I'm doing is that this is gonna take, you know, it could take two or three lessons worth of work. Everything I make, I then glue into position because there's 30 other people or so in the classroom we don't want to have mistaken identity of who did what. So I'm going to press that down so that it's in place. Um, so that will be uh, completely kind of encrusted with these plaited surfaces, these kind of beading effects, maybe coils. There might be other things that you can think of. You might actually introduce other bits, maybe some found objects. Maybe you went beachcombing and you found some shells. Those could be nestled in amongst uh, this sort of plaited and twisted uh, newspaper. Um, so, you know, we'll have fun customising these frames and then um, we can add colour to them. That's it, guys.